we don't usually need it. <laughs> we teach the teams how to speak loudly, right? In their very their voice. And we've been practicing for this moment for many weeks and working on their projects for many months. So again, let's welcome the graduating students. I'm also here for comic relief before the serious business starts. And I try to not repeat my jokes, but Sean was so where's Sean, my man. <laughs> was so happy with my last one, so I will use it again and welcome you again to one of the top 10 UCs in the country. <laughs> Welcome to our Project Showcase event. And thank you again to all the sponsors and all the parents who are here. We actually have past, present, and future sponsors, which is my favorite combination. So thank you again for coming. In this part, I'm mostly here for sort of practical guidance and logistics. So hopefully you found the parking, you know where the restrooms are, my most important guidance to the guests is there is another room with more teams. I mean, they're here now for the first part, but when this becomes a science fair, which happens in about an hour, there's about 15 to 16 teams here and four or five more teams in the smaller room. Please don't neglect them, don't ignore them. Make sure to go and visit the other room as well. And I think we might have even uh, specifically placed some of the food over there to, uh, to make sure that you get over there as well. Um, the students have been fed as well prior to everyone's arrival, otherwise they wouldn't come. <laughs> right? And the first part, the first hour, we're trying to diligently, try to go diligently through 19 team presentations. They've been practicing and trained very well to do it in three minutes or less. So we're going to try to have a very fast-moving operation here. So my guidance to the students is the first half of teams is already seated nicely here, and they'll be coming through and using the presentations that are up here. Uh, just open up yours and go through it and make sure it's less than three minutes. The second half of teams, when it gets to be towards the end of the first half, please take your seats. And the first 10 teams, when you're done here, just make sure that you go back to your booth and go back next to your poster. Except the teams that have been banished to the other room, you can stay here for the rest of the presentation. Every now and then, I'll try to make an announcement about an upcoming team. If they did something special or something not so special, I'll try to make that announcement. So the first team is uh, worked on a project for a company called Cyrano, and they also participated, which is sort of an honor and award in our engineering event. So, first team. Hello, everyone. We are Team Cyrano. Uh, we are Team Cyrano. UCI. My name is David. My name is Thomas. My name is Taylor. I'm Sam. I'm Nessa. My name is Sean. Great. And to begin, we're going to start with a brief recap of what we've been working on. So, over the past 20 weeks, we've been We've been working on a project that uses data collected from a company called Cyrano to better improve the customer service experience. Uh, what we've done is created an interactive demo that they're able to use to show their prospective clients a way to better use artificial intelligence to begin training their customer service reps. In doing this, their customer service reps have been able to uh, understand the deeper meaning behind what their customers are trying to say. So, like David said, the company that, we, that we've had the privilege of working for for the past 20 weeks is named Cyrano. They are a company that aims to change the way companies communicate with their uh, customers um, using artificial intelligence and natural language processing. So, at the start of our quarter, we decided that we wanted to uh, we wanted to make something that the sky was the limit up to what we wanted to make. We decided to make a two-way chat client for customer service representatives, and we immediately started making sketches, mock-ups, and prototypes. From there, we implemented the two-way chat system, and we worked with our sponsors to iterate on the design and nail down the features that we really wanted. So this is what the product looked like at the end of winter quarter, but this would change even more coming in the spring. So, as we are moving forward into the spring quarter, our project evolved on these three aspects: usability, performance, and availability. So, here is an updated mock-up uh, of our design, and as you can see on the right side, the analysis portion is completely designed. 
in terms of usability, we are now displaying for just two blocks of actual data on the website. Uh, in terms of performance, we were able to dramatically reduce the amount of API cost thanks to local caching. And last but not least, we paid attention to both horizontal and vertical cost of this, so that our software runs on all kinds of screen sizes and levels. To build the application that our sponsors desired, we had to learn to think about a multitude of things. First off was the framework. Because we wanted to separate the data and the services from the visual components themselves, we decided to use Angular. While building the system, to handle all the data and the API calls that we were making and the information from those API calls, we developed our own data structure, which is a queue linked to a linked list. Because we wanted all this data to be accessible later, and because we know that Cyrano wants to use this data for artificial intelligence learning, we decided to implement a Cloud Firestore database. To get all this to work together, we need to use asynchronous programming and think about the information flow of the system. And we learned plenty of non-technical skills as well, from time and scope management to presenting in front of a large audience. We also learned how to create user-centric designs, and most importantly, we learned how to communicate effectively with our sponsor and our team. And if you'd like to know more about our project, you can come visit our booth. Our booth is actually located right through those doors and into the room on the other side. We'd be more than happy to share some more details with you all. Thank you. Showcase of the proposal becomes more and more apparent. 
Uh, with that in mind, we have implemented and on several occasions used the DFS judge system to be able to organize and manage these events in real time in the hopes of playing a part in uninhibiting the growth of the program. Our project also is to create a platform that can create a story when they implement even details and also manage the competition um, automatically. We are delivered through a user friendly and efficient design. Over the past 20 weeks, we learned a lot of technical lessons throughout this project. First, we learned how to manage a project's goal. It cannot be too little or too much for the team to implement the project. Secondly, we learned a lot of software tools. We, we come from knowing nothing about React to becoming pretty skilled at using it. With that, we further our experience in writing JavaScript. We also learned how to use UI framework Bootstrap to enhance our user experience. We also practice a lot of data structure design with the use of Firebase. Lastly, we learned the importance of keeping the code writing organized and clean because it is going to be much more efficient for others to, co to collaborate on your code. And it's going to be easy for you to revisit and debug on your code. And it is always better to keep a design document for your code and keep updating it. Uh, for the non-technical non lessons, we learned that uh, the, the strong team communication is uh, key to the success of our project. We use the Facebook Messenger to uh, communicate with each other, as well as use Slack to communicate with our sponsors and push updates. Furthermore, uh, we also learned that sharing one's knowledge to the team help, helps to speed up the process of doing the project and uh, quickly resolve any possible uh, obstacles the team has. Thank you, everyone. Please come see us. Good afternoon, everybody. We are the Give Some Options team, and our sponsor is Give Some. So, in a nutshell, Give Some is a platform that allows people to connect with charities and empowers them to be a force for good. So, what's cool about this platform? is that it allows people and charities to track their donations, their volunteer hours, and much more from one place. Um, our goal for this project was to design and implement an auction system that allows charities to virtually auction off items that allows uh, donors to bid and purchase those items. So GiveSum is all about philanthropy, uh, meaning that a common practice for, for charities is to auction off items to fundraise. Um, the issue for GiveSum was that they didn't have a dedicated auctioning system, um, in this case, meaning that if donors should actually place a bid on items, that would facilitate their fundraising efforts at the same time to help out with things like record keeping and other little like features we could add to the actual So our solution was to implement an auctions uh, platform to give some platform which would enable uh, charities to create auctions and add items to those auctions which are related to certain opportunities which are events such as galas. Uh, and during these events, users are able to attend and bid on certain items in order to reach the charities our respective donation goal, which would in turn allow them to successfully, uh, at the end of the event, purchase the event, purchase the, the item that they want, and successfully check out, which would allow them to participate in philanthropy. So the technical characteristics that we use to build our auctions feature, we built most of it on Ruby on Royals. And then we also use PostgreSQL as our database. And then also for project management, we use Pivotal Tracker. So throughout our project, we encountered a few challenges. The first being learning a new programming language, Ruby on Rails. In addition, we had to familiarize ourselves with the Gibson's development process, from creating tasks on Pivotal Tracker to merging our code on GitHub. And lastly, we had a few communication issues just because of all of our hectic schedules. But overall, we were able to gain a lot of technical so, in short, we are again going to give some options to We're right over there with the orange poster. Um, and don't forget, be a force for good. Hey everyone, uh, we're Team Rocket, and my name is Jared. I'm Alex. Marcus. You fun. Thank you. And we wanted to start off with talking about our sponsor. Our sponsor is Blast, and they're a company that wants to help gamers save and earn money as they video games. And our project pretty much takes that idea and puts it into a desktop application, which we will now talk more about. 
the problem we want to solve includes two parts, the game session and uh, the vacation. For the game session, we want to figure out the best solution to capture the game session data locally to guarantee the data in time and accurate. For the application, our, the problem is to generate a musical platform to allow the user to save their money by playing video games. Because for now, we are focusing on the PC games. We want to create a scalable uh, desktop version. To get to our solution, we researched how popular games track user performance locally. We looked at Fortnite, CSGO, Apex Legends, and League of Legends. Ultimately, we found that Fortnite stores replay files locally. So we were able to parse these replay files, extract their information, and implement different features with this information. So as stated, the purpose of our project was to help Blast create a working desktop version of their product, which we'd be able to track users' video game session performance, and then display it in an electronic application. To facilitate the progress of our project, our sponsors split it into two parts. With part one, consisting of our team, researching a solution to be able to find uh, a, a, a local solution to, um, to find gamers' data on their local machines, and then, and then store that information in the database. In part two, our team's main goal was to organize all this data and create an electronic application that would be able to display the user's game session data and career stats in an effective and aesthetic user interface. Some of the technology that we use were for flatten, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For backend, we use uh, Node.js, Electron, MySQL for the database, and Python for one of the parsers. And for communication, we just use Slack, GitHub, and Google Drive. So there are some challenges that we face while working on this project. When we were assigned to do this project, we all didn't know how to use the electron app. However, as doing some research, we all now know how to use the electron app and be able to apply them in problem application as well as other technologies. We also have some communication issues and as a result, we ended up doing the work of our group. Our group were able to solve this problem by keeping each other on track for every changes we make on the code. Throughout these challenges, we, were, we as a team are able not just to learn how to use new technologies, but also learn how to communicate, manage, and organize between the team members and the project, which can be used to prepare us for our current future in the real world. And then we just want to end it by just saying that we're getting on this project with a blast. Thank you guys. <laughs> Alright, hello everyone. Thank you for giving us your time to come to the final project showcase. Thank you for giving us your attention and all of the other teams here as well. My name is Zachary Little. I'm Jackie. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. I'm Takaya. And we're going to tell you about what we know over the last 20 weeks. So, Biorad is a fairly formal, fairly conservative biotechnology company that within the last year has come under new software ownership, trying to build a lean startup environment. So, what was our project? We had a mission to provide a proof of concept for an inventory data visibility tool for the Irvine location, which is the Quality Systems Division. The reason why this was important is they sell biological products. So one product isn't the same as the next one that gets sold in six months. That creates a very complex organizational process that they brought us in to automate. So we were brought in to help BioRad sales team with fi finding out which products are going to be available to their to their customers within a certain period of time. So part of the part of the complexity of this problem has to do with the fact that BioRed salespeople have to manually evaluate thousands of products, expiration dates across various product levels. On top of that, all of this data is spread across four separate databases. So we set out to build an application and the architecture for a central database that aggregates data taken from Excel spreadsheets in order to build a window into BioRad sales, uh, sales, sales data and to wrap that up neatly into a intuitive user interface. Cool, and so how did we do that? Like I said, it was a really complex organization, so we had to learn a lot about the business logic that they wanted us to actually automate. So we started off the first couple weeks just doing interviews with the leadership team, the operational team, and the sales people who were actually going to use our tool. Once we got that down and we knew what we wanted to build, we, built, we did a few quick feasibility spikes just to see if our understanding was correct. That led us into the paper prototypes and into some very high level system design, just architecture diagrams based on a piece of paper or a whiteboard. Once we had that down, we gave it to our sponsors, 
They have let us know that we're going in the right direction. So we made a little bit higher fidelity with some actual database diagrams in our data structures. And eventually we turn that into a working prototype that you can all come see our group over here. Big quality control superhero dude with the goggles. Throughout the course of this project, we learned an array of lessons, skills both technical and non-technical, specifically relating to the full software development lifecycle, because we went from requirements gathering to actually packaging this up and delivering it to our sponsors. Additionally, agile software development. Most importantly, though, we, at the end of the day, like, we built real relationships with each other and with our sponsors. And Jackie, the, the real technical lead behind this, said it best that we grew up here. So we wanted to thank Byron for that. Um, and really, just last thing is thank you all for giving us your time. Thank you. Hi, we are Team Design, and our project was on Campesa. A little bit about our project, our sponsor was Omar Azadi. He is the adjunct assistant professor at USC. He is also the owner of Campesa, which is a day, summer daycare camp for children. So what was our project really about? So our project was to build from scratch a full parent and child registration system for the summer camp at Camp Isla here in Irvine. At the end of the day, some of our deliverables included a registration website where parents could go sign up their kids and themselves for accounts on the website. We built a set of administrative tools to reduce the number of clicks that our sponsor has to go through when managing the camp, as well as a database with a new schema for storing all of that information. For a project, we wanted to make a registration system that was easier for returning parents by having it store information that wouldn't change year to year. As the existing system uh, required way too many clicks for the administrator to complete simple tasks, uh, obtaining an existing system was an option that we didn't choose to go with because the simple functionality desired would result in an expensive cost. So throughout the past two weeks, we have developed and pushed live multiple features for our system, with it kind of being divided into two parts, with the first being the parent system. Now with the parent system, parents have the ability to create accounts for themselves in which they can register their children for camp. After they register their children, they make payments through PayPal, which we've integrated onto the site. And after payments are done, the parents are emailed the receipt of the transaction. Next we have the administrator system, in which admins have the ability to edit camp information, such as scheduling, pricing, and more. They have the ability to look through a database roster dump to filter out some information and look for specific things in the database, so it's a little bit easier on them. And we have emergency release form generation, in which with one click of a button, the administrators can generate all the PDFs of the emergency release forms for all the students or campers attending that summer. Now with all these systems in place and all these features in place, we obviously did run into our fair share of issues in which we had to tackle as a team. The first issue that we ran into was having to design an entirely new database schema from scratch. We accomplished this through some thorough conceptualizing and eventually migrating database services from GoDaddy to uh, Google Cloud Services. The most difficult challenge we had to contend with, however, was bug fixing for a live system. Our system has been live for approximately three months now. It already has about 160 kids registered for the system. So whenever a, a bug was reported, we had strove to identify and resolve those issues within 24 hours, which was difficult, but taught us a lot about a live system. Can't just sign up today. <laughs> All right, uh, hello, everybody. Happy to finally see the front of your face. It's not just a sign. Uh, my name is Jose, this is Kim, Shen, Chen, and Andy, and we are Team Star Friday. So, for our project, we created a mobile health chatbot named Ivy that can answer questions regarding patient doctor visits. Specifically, we can handle questions regarding billing services, appointment scheduling, unknown term lookups, and symptom checking. So, at the beginning of the quarter, we were tasked to create a system that had not yet been implemented anywhere else. And we created this chatbot. And uh, actually, sorry, I'm going to read this quote for you guys. So, the healthcare field has long been sitting on the latest mobile technology, quite literally. That's kind of some of the motivation we have for our project. Yeah, so, um, in order to solve the problem of having, uh, not having good enough, good enough mobile health applications, um, WinVision had decided to create this interactive chatbot that could better assist the patient. And we believe that through this approach, we can reshape the current state in the market of mobile applications. 
So we already know the mission and about the project. We already know like, how we came up with the idea. So I'll go through some features and how we came up with those. So first, like, we, we searched some about our users. We realized like, there's two ways for users to check their bill. The first one, the medical insurance is the bills like, through the mailbox. The second one, they're going to just like, find those little email icons in their mailbox. Email inbox. So, Instead of doing that, so we define our chatbot, so we can just ask chatbot like organizing all those bills. Also, at the same time, based on the insurance, insurance network, our chatbot can gonna give you personalized doctor suggestions. And in the end, we all know like that most of the time people just have little questions about certain terms about medical issues, but they don't want to go to their doctors. So in the end, we can ask our chatbot. So at the beginning of this project, we received two things from our sponsor. One is the PHP, uh, Laravel as a backend, uh, and also IO as a front-end, and we were required to build upon this existing, uh, existing code. Um, but we didn't know much about these two things, and then we only have 20 weeks. So we spent some time research, is researching, and we found out there's something called Omen, which is a pretty existing uh, framework. Uh, has a lot of chatting feature implemented. So we combined this thing and built our first uh, web version. And we were required to build iOS version after that, so we uh, uh, make our own API and we use it to connect it to our backend. And we also use MySQL to retrieve real data to uh, realize a real conversation between user and their bot. And most importantly, uh, we learned a lot about Bitbucket, which is a uh, question that shows So for the non-technical side, we had to learn how to adjust our methods of communicating and just working in general to match responses, as well as learning how to interpret this feedback and ideas and implement the Medicare project. We also had to learn how to evaluate and estimate the risk that came up, especially as the condition we got closer. And we really wanted to prevent change from changing the entire scope of our project. So to manage scope creep, we have a requirements document that we just consistently updated so we can see the progress. And lastly, we didn't have time to set ideas about making concrete decisions, so we use methods like decision trees and collective thinking in order to make decisions efficient. And don't forget to check out our booth located right over there. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Edward. I'm Faison. David. I'm Don. Neil. And our project is on UCI account management. Basically, this tool is a web base that allows all UCI staff, student, affiliate, or any former member of UCI to go to this website, which allows them to customize their personal information, as well as any feature that has been provided by the school of UCI. And this project won't be possible with our awesome sponsor, Warren and Dave. So currently, users have to traverse different websites in order to manage different aspects of their account. All these websites had different layouts and interfaces, which caused some difficulties for some users. So our solution is the account management tool. It's a single location, it has a consistent interface for all users where they can manage all aspects of their account. So initially, we discussed the project scope and project goals with our sponsor and what tools and softwares we would have to use. And before designing, we came up with our personas and scenarios and uh, remember functional requirements non-functional requirements and assumptions with our sponsor. And while we were designing the project, we continuously created mockups and transferred those mockups on a pattern lash, which stitches together UI components. And lastly, we implemented those pages using Ruby on Rails. So to go over it, we sketched, uh, we sketched here our mockups. We transferred those mockups on a pattern lab and then implemented those pages using Ruby on Rails. So challenges for sketch whenever we run into the problems. A lot of information, um, a lot of information were out of date, so that encourages us to experiment more on our more, more with the sketch. For panel lab, creating components was really uh, tedious and detailed work for us. So due to all the efforts that we put in at the beginning of the project, uh, we were able to reuse many of our components, and that helped us develop faster and later on the project. For Ruby on Rails, working with online server was really a challenge for us because we were so used to working with a local server. And we believe that gave us realistic experience that we're going to need in the future. 
So tonight's our presentation, we would like to share a quote from Jacob Nielsen, and this is just something that uh, resonated with us throughout and the project. Consistency is one of the most powerful usability principles. When things always behave the same, you, users don't have to worry about what will happen. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Will. Hi. Nick. Mike. My name is Jackie. We are team Not Fast, Just Furious, and our project is Zinbase. So it's great that UCI has been growing and gaining more prestige. However, with more and more students enrolling in project courses, ICS is barely able to organize enough students, is barely able to organize enough projects and sponsors to pair with those students. With time, this problem will only get worse. We here at Shooting Not Fast Just Furious have come up with a solution. We have created sorry, we have created a web application that synchronizes all information related to ICS project courses. We've also created an externally facing public site, which is linked to our database, to allow for easier sponsor outreach. As you will see, there are several components to developing our system. So we began identifying our stakeholders and documented requirements based on their needs. Uh, we, we also refined the, I'm sorry, we, we also met them again on spring quarter before it goes, move on to the half point, and then we asked them their thoughts on what we had at the time. And then we, we also, in addition, we also work with the OIT and I, ICS help desk to deploy our project into ICS and using rebels to set up security. Lastly, uh, we prepare a document for future deployment. And coming up next, we would like to share our lesson learned through this process. So for our project, we learned both technical and non-technical lessons. For our technical lessons, since we are not familiar with some of the required programs for the project, uh, we had to balance between learning these programs, such as Apache and Django, as well as making progress on our project. While deploying web applications, we had to take into consideration small intricacies, such as how to deploy the web applications on web servers and how to keep it secure. For our non-technical lessons learned, expectation of due dates across team members will be consistent. Therefore, we had to set hard and agree with them. Also, working with multiple stakeholders meant that we had to manage an inevitable scope with more and more work coming in from the multiple stakeholders. Lastly, the agile development process was ran the course, so we learned to embrace it. If you would like to learn more, please visit our booth over there with the uh, giant yellow road, uh, as well as checking out our website, capstone.ics.uci.edu. Uh, we also wanted to take the time to give a huge shout out to Dude Tramp from ICF Help Desk for getting the project from just running something that's local to actually being online. Um, that being said, please check us out. Thank you. Okay, hello, we're the DOT Unified with the Aerospace Corporation. So, there's a pretty big threat to humanity that most of humanity knows nothing about, and that is the asteroid. You take a small asteroid, maybe the size of a house, and it could destroy a small city. You take a bigger asteroid, maybe 500 meters big. It could destroy most of Southern California. Now the good thing is that there are solutions to these problems. You could send up a rocket and maybe try to deflect the asteroid. The bad thing is that these solutions are very underfunded. And why are they underfunded? Because nobody really knows about them. So that's where our sponsor comes in. The Room Element of the Aerospace Corporation. He studies a lot of planetary defense, he teaches classes, goes to conferences, his idea was, what if we had a tool that he could use during those conferences to teach people about asteroid deflection? So that became our project. So in order to raise awareness about this threat, our main goal for this project was to create an educational and fun game that allows players to deflect asteroids in a way that is both entertaining but without compromising the real-life processes that um, that needed to take place in order to go about doing that. So to do this, we wanted to implement realistic physics and impact scenarios that are actually based on actual projected data while building things. Now the game was created using the Unity um, game engine. Now while the Unity game engine has its own physics components within the game itself, we decided to use uh, hyper hyper Unity game components and also our own physics uh, scripts that we created using the games in order to create more functionality in um, however, we also had to create the uh, functions, the, the physics uh, functions as well, which also was led to some of our more difficulties in creating the games because 
it is difficult creating real life physics. Um, on top of that, we also use the UDP libraries for creating the user interface and all the details that you see in the game itself. So our team faced a few challenges. Our first challenge was working on projects that rely on another group. Um, this took some time to really study up on this simulation that we were given, but ultimately, ultimately allowed us to repurpose all of the elements of the simulation to be put into our game. Our second challenge was our lack of domain knowledge, uh, specifically in the physics and the orbitals. Uh, this took up some time to study as well, but it, uh, it became, we had Full, uh, fuller understanding after studying it, which allowed us to uh, be able to manipulate the variables and also uh, maintain the realistic physics in our game. And lastly, uh, we had many issues in Unity and also in Unity, and this made us have to redo some of the work that we had, but it gave us a more full understanding on Unity and also our own. Okay, thank you very much. Please stop our demonstration and see if you can save Earth from catastrophe. <laughs> Developing the Google Docs highlighting add on sponsored by Professor Rebecca Black and Professor Bill Tomlinson. In short, this add on allows users to highlight and categorize parts of their writing as summary, commentary, or evidence. It's primarily intended for research purposes and will be used by both students and teachers in structured settings. So, the problem currently, there is minimal engagement uh, from students with their writing. There is a lack of thought regarding essay structure and composition which led us to recognize that there are two needs. The need for a visual learning tool with which students can engage with their writing and composition, and the need for a research data gathering tool to better understand the way that students interact with their writing. So in order to solve this, we've created this tool which allows students to highlight and categorize their essay according to uh, three categories, summary, evidence, and commentary. database which logs the changes that each, it, it logs a snapshot of the essay at each change that the student makes. Uh, the idea being that researchers could use this data to observe the thought processes of students as they think and interact with their writing. So this is one possible way to represent the data that we collect. Uh, the x-axis is time, the y-axis is the category of each character in the essay. Uh, this represents the simplest of this case, which is just the student going through the essay in order and categorizing as they see fit. So, in the add-on, we use Google Apps and Firebase to store each document's metadata. We also use HTML to create the data visualization using D3 and to structure the add-on. So throughout this entire project, we learned a lot. The first thing that we learned was how to use the tools necessary for the success of this project, which, like Hanji stated, were Google, AppScript, Firebase, D3, and HTML. The second thing that we learned was how to work around the technical limitations of each of these tools. And the third thing that we learned was how to work together as a group to figure out what to include and what not to include to make sure that this project had the best usability, functionality, and practicality. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Music Next Week presentation. This is the mobile app that we've been working on for the past few weeks. Uh, we are the team behind it. My name is Gary. I'm And we've been working with some of our sponsors who are UCF professors here, Dr. Bill Tomlinson and Brian Ogifan. So before I go into the app, let's give you some context. 55% of Americans in the last year said that they've lost trust in their news media. They cited the fact that people on there were just weren't transparent enough. So let's give them a tool, perhaps, to give them that transparency. Introducing the News X-ray app, which is a face recognition mobile application where we allow you to identify hundreds of politicians on the news and you get to learn more about who they are and where their money comes, comes from and just not take what comes out of their mouth at face value. So we followed the pretty standard design process our first few weeks. We started off with paper sketches and then moved on to some higher fidelity um, mock-ups using Adobe XD. Afterwards, we settled on using React Native for our front-end development. And we also took um, some inspiration from mobile applications such as Snapchat for our open camera user interface. So how does this app work actually in the back end? So the user opened the phone and opened our app and take a picture of someone. The photo will be sent to our Facebook Plus database. Okay? 
interface is matched to our faces stored in the data in the API database. The person's name will be returned to our Firebase database. And if the name is found in our database, then the person's the information, the full information will be returned back to the app. Data collection is very important for our app. So we collected our data from government data databases and watch our sets. And also we use high resolution photos for our content and politicians. So in the past 20 weeks we learned a lot of like our mobile app development because we developed our app based on React Native, uh, which is a hybrid uh, program language that can automatically generate the native code for iOS and Android platform. Besides that, we learned how to work with third-party API and how to communicate with a backend Firebase. But most importantly, we learned how to work with uncertainties and uh, overcome those uncertainties as a team. So thanks for listening to our presentation. If you'd like to try out the app, we'll uh, be right over there. And thanks. All right, so good afternoon. We are a team of Rose and Bananas working on a project called Theater Now for Apple's Oranges. Um, so our sponsor is Apple's Oranges, and they're a theater company whose mission it is to take a start in Apple Oranges. So what that means is giving artists the tools and resources they need to pursue their passion for arts while learning to be successful entrepreneurs. So the problem at hand, really, especially with the theatrical rights acquisition process, is truly best described as unfair, especially with the small theater in mind. And as far as what these rights are, it's resources and the ability for these theaters to monetize their production, such as scripts, uh, musical resources, set design, stuff like that. As far as how it's unfair, uh, a lot of larger corporations own uh, a lot of show rights, and this creates extended negotiation periods, as, a, as well as a lot of upfront costs, which is ultimately resources small theaters don't have. However, we really solution to this problem. Our solution was to create a theatrical rights acquisition and tracking website. First, we created a dashboard to uh, consolidate the main system features. We have revenue, social media, and notifications. Next, we have a catalog of shows that they can acquire rights to, as well as shows that they have previously produced. Next, we have the social media generator, um, which creates personalized social media posts <coughs> for promoting the shows, ticket sales, and other merchandise. And last, we have a resources page that provides access to all the scripts, music, and other resources they will need to produce the show. Our project ended up being completely front-end, so we used HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, jQuery, and we used the Bootstrap framework. And our hosting and database was through Microsoft Azure. So one challenge that we had was we had a challenge with time. All the time, basically, we had to create a whole new interface because it changed from last quarter. And something that we learned from that is that we can come away with the experience that we used to do. Another challenge that we had was learning new tools. A lot of us had to use tools that we weren't familiar with, and we had to learn them. And also, what we can learn from that is basically new skills that we can apply in college. So, how do you like that? which are continuously producing data. As a result, and this data is a bit difficult to understand and visualize, as a result, we were asked to create a web application which not only displays 3D machine models, but also uh, presents to the user data that is readable and in real time. Here is our bell. Okay, so speak. let's start off with uh, some of the background of Hexagon as a company and their vision for the project. So as a multi-billion dollar global company, they have, they're trying to connect the physical world with the digital world, and one of the ways they do is through the sensors and IoT devices. When they came up to us and introduced the project, they already had asset management uh, dashboard, but they wanted something more visual, and the proprietary 3D software, we were able to combine the telemetry data that the machines produce and combine it with the 3D models. So some challenges that we faced throughout the project was um, create, setting up meeting times with our sponsor. As they're constantly out of country, it was very hard to really get a meeting time with them. Because of this, there was a delay in actually getting very crucial project resources, such as the 3D models and getting access to their API. 
because of this, our project was pretty slow going in the beginning, so it was hard to create a solid structure and foundation. And because of that, one of the main issues that we actually faced was getting our project to work on both Mac and Windows machines. Despite our challenges, we also had some successes. We were able to learn the LiveVR SDK to work with 3D models. We've created our own API to pull and format technology data. And we've, we've made continuous progress and improvements to our application through feedback from our sponsors. So there are many lessons learned over the course of this journey. Some technical um, include 3GS, which is a library that we use at first to display simple shapes. And then we later transitioned into a MyVR SDK, which was used to substitute these simple shapes to machines, which was to mimic a real-life factory floor. And some non-technical skills that we learned were DevOps, which is a tool that our sponsors wanted us to use to um, get some real-life experience with the agile development. Um, it helped uh, form our communication and collaboration with our sponsors. Uh, we'd like to extend a special thanks to our sponsors, Rajiv and Leo, for giving us the opportunity to work on this project. And we'd like to encourage our sponsors that are just over there. Thank you. Uh, hi, we're the same team. I'm Isaac. Hello. I'm Amy. I'm Aiden. I'm Oscar. I'm Nija. And today we're going to introduce our product, Rob. So a little about our sponsor. Our sponsor is MSC Software. They're right here in Newport Beach. They formed in 1963. It's one of the oldest software companies ever formed. And they focus on uh, simulation software and services. So the problem is that the HR department in uh, the company spends too much time answering questions that can be automated. Questions such as, what are my benefits? And, uh, included in the copay, 501k, stuff like that. So we developed a solution. Yes, so we came up with an AI chatbot called Rock.ai. It can answer questions about MS software with uh, easy access and instant, in instant response to its employees. It can be taught by either staff's manual input or interaction with user inquiries. Okay, this graph basically explains our basic workflow. So it starts from user inputting the question, and then our processor can pre-process all the, the user questions, and then the process data is passed into our logic adapter. So our logic, logic adapter basically using matrix measurement and natural language processing to find the best match response. And later, the best match response is split back to the user. Let's dig into our front end and back end. So for the back end, we took under consideration our sponsor's major uh, concern, which was security. For this reason, we decided to use Chatterbot framework to create the chatbot. This allows us to store everything locally in the CQ line database. Um, we also use Python uh, threading and Flask to connect it to the front end. So we have two ways to gather the data. The first way was through uh, MSC Software's HR department. And the second way was we looked online at other HR departments uh, in order to uh, get, get that data. And we split that data into three categories. The first category was benefits, the second one was traveling, and the third one was frequently asked questions. Uh, so our current project is focused on the HR system, but we hope in the future we can expand our project to more aspects, including the client side, like traveling questions, like hosting questions. At the end, let's say it together. Bye. Well, today we're going to be talking about KidSense, the product we've been working on for the past five months. My name is Randy. I'm me. I'm Angel. I'm Fernando. O'Brien. So, Kato is a company focused on building advanced speech recognition devices and tools geared for children. Currently, their ASR, Automatic Speech Recognition, is one of the best in the market to help compete with companies like Google and Amazon when these devices are used by children. So our team has been working closely with the individuals at Cato to develop an application and filtration system that operates within the bounds of child safety and security laws. As a result, um, 
KidSense was developed a voice assistant platform that gives parents the confidence to allow their children to interact with the web without compromising computer security. So a quick overview of our progress in last quarter. In the first initial weeks we spent meeting with our sponsors and, develop, and talking about how we're going to approach this project and the different laws that we needed to follow in order to, for our project to actually be um, after week five, we started doing the actual implementation where we did the filtering of file numbers for vanity and then we also started the basic UI by doing mockups and then actually doing a mockup in, in Azure Studio. And by week 10, we did the database storing all the users. So the lessons learned throughout the quarter were on the technical side, we had Android development for the first half, where we were developing our Android application. From there, we came with NLP, which is the library we use for the machine learning portion of the project. Uh, PHP and MySQL, which were the, the back end, where we used it to save all our user settings. And it has to put the project all together, and Unity for our new reiterated and recreated project for this past quarter. On the non-technical side, we have the scope management, and uh, we learned how to control our project and make sure it doesn't get out of control. And the Scrum and Agile development cycle where we got used to the two week sprints and constant meetings. And finally, our leadership and communication skills we developed throughout the quarter with uh, taking an input on our project and with our sponsors. Thank you everybody for your time. If you have any further questions or want to see our action, action please come see us in the other room. SEAL Team 6 and we worked with the Pacific Marine Mammal Center to design an educational game that would help the center teach kids what exactly the center does in its forms of rescuing and rehabilitating seal and marine wildlife or mammals. Quick, quickly, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Kristen Donald. She is the Director of Education with the Center, and she has been a tremendous help when it came to giving us the important information for the game and for providing feedback on our So currently, the Pacific Marine Mammal Center houses around 80 locations, and many of them are found ill and very injured. This is a picture of a past patient, a seal named Sheriff, who was found dehydrated, underweight, and entangled in a plastic bag. Because of the care that he received at the Pacific Marine Mammal Center, he was released at a healthy children house. The problem we have been working on is uh, many people visit PMCC, and we can see every day. Um, the PMCC used to have an uh, interactive learning experience for their visitors, and the visitors want a uh, uh, fun learning activity focused on the memory of their education. Our solution was to make an interactive game based on the rehab story for the Pacific Marine Mammal Center uh, patients. Our players to teach the rehab process to trial and error, and we broke our game up into three main stages. The examination stage, where users use two, uh, tools to examine the animal. The diagnosis stage, where users determine what's wrong with the animal. And finally, the treatment stage, where users once again use tools to uh, rehabilitate the animal. Bring our product to life and use two different developmental and design environments Photoshop and Unity. Photoshop is used to draw the different graphics, such as the tool widgets and the actual animals. And Unity was where we dealt with all the technical aspects, such as adding functionality to all the little animations we drew out. Uh, and this was accomplished using Unity's default C sharp scripting language. So when we first um, started this project, we actually had very little experience with either game design or art design. So a lot of the stuff we were doing, we were like tackling for very first time. It made certain things difficult for sure, but it was a great experience when it came to just like broadening horizons and like learning like things that kind of fall outside of the scope of our traditional like software-based education. It was a really rewarding experience to work at the center um, and we're helping them with their technicals. Um, 
That was our presentation. Hopefully, you earned your seal of approval. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. We are Team SAP. I'm Micah. This is Carlos, Tim, Armando, Josh, and June. Now, have you guys ever noticed that when you go to the doctor, you have to spend so much time filling out paperwork and pre-screening surveys and, and talking to the technicians before you even get to speak to your own physician? Well, doctors don't much like that, and neither do we, which is why for the past five months, we've been developing a voice control pre-screening survey so that you can give the doctor all your information before you even get to your appointment, and you can spend that time one-on-one -on -one with your doctor, like the way it should be. Now, here's Tim with a little bit more about the problem. Because of the current documentation system in the medical field, there are three main problems that are driving forces between SAP's keyboardless hospital vision. First of all, Doctors are so overburdened with both physical and digital documents. Patients often find themselves uh, spending time with unnecessary pre-appointment technicians. And thirdly, doctors don't have much time for personal interaction with patients during their actual appointments because they're so responsible for filling out documents. I'm going to hand it out to Carlos to talk about one more solution. And so our sponsors over at SAP approached us with uh, their vision of the keyboardless hospital, which is an idea that they've been developing for some time now. And the way that we specifically contributed to this vision of theirs was by developing an Amazon Alexa skill, which would allow a patient to fill out a pre-appointment screening survey, which streamlines the conventional process of the pre-screening survey. So as Carlos said, we're using the Alexa, which naturally led us to using Node.js, Amazon Web Services, and GitHub. And we found out that the Alexa is not so much suited for uh, long and unpredictable conversations like we wanted, but more so of short and back and forth ones. But we still got it done nevertheless. And we also took advantage of the middleware it provided. Uh, along the way, we also had to pick up some non-technical skills to make our development more efficient. So for our communication, we made use of virtual and physical meetings as well as Slack and Facebook Messenger. For our project management, we made use of Trello as well as Slack stand-up bot. And then um, and in the past few quarters, we came through a series of different challenges, but nonetheless, our group, our group cohesion was impeccable, and being a part of the team was a wholesome experience. Thank you. Don't forget to come check out our booth in that room later. But for now, here's our Professor Zip with an announcement. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you one more time to all the guests and all the students. In about five minutes, we're going to switch to a science fair mode. But before we do that, a couple of special guests. First of all, the dean of the entire School of Information and Computer Sciences, our Dean Myers.
Anyhow, I want to thank UCI and the program for sponsoring, allowing us to sponsor a capstone team. For us, it was our first attempt. I have to tell you, the team knocked it out of the park. So congratulations to the team for doing an outstanding job. We will continue to sponsor. Working with Miguel from UCI and the students coming out is really invigorating. It's encouraging. It's nice to see the talent and the enthusiasm that's coming out. I wish you all well in the future and keep up the good work. Thank you. So I would like to really thank both this year's team and last year's team representative here. It's a two years team that we had uh, gathered together to save the world from us to its. Uh, hopefully it's going to continue. Uh, I encourage you to go visit uh, and read about it. It's uh, an important uh, topic of the safety of our society. And so I was very fortunate to have a set of eight students from this school uh, signing up to save the world. Um, they made huge progress. Very proud of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank ACI very much for this opportunity, as well as the Cloud Factory team. They took, they took uh, data coming up and uh, turning it into information, visual and uh, easy to use, which was completely awesome. They ran through a lot of, uh, lot of uh, roadblocks, which was excellent, and uh, really succeeded all the way around. We are completely excited about what they did. Um, it's, a, it's a testament to the generation coming through the school and what they're doing. It's excellent, uh, excellent work. In it. Um, Great team to work with. Look forward to this confusion. So thank you everyone. We're moving now to the science fair stage. Just a couple more logistics items. And students, I have an assignment for you. And it's not the food. <laughs> the food over there is for the guests, please. The students, I would love your help once everybody is up and milling about in moving the chairs out of the way. So yeah, I make it work one more time. One last time, hopefully. We try to move the chairs kind of generally to that area, to the back side of the building. Thank you everyone, enjoy the science fair.